Well, you know, if the public really had an idea of what was going on in this country right now, we'd have to have this at the Vine Center. But right now, they still, for the most part, are clueless as to what's going on. 2,000 years ago, there was a politician, a Roman governor named Pontius Pilate, and he was more concerned with keeping his position than doing what was right. His life was spent playing to the crowd and whatsoever whims they had. He was a man who was not given to absolutes. And in John chapter 18, Jesus was on trial before Pontius Pilate. And during the course of that trial, Jesus made a statement, and I quote, Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. And being the consummate politician, Pilate answered, what is truth? It appears that the Roman Empire is back again in America. And our government is full of people just like Pontius Pilate. Playing to the crowd, promising the moon, acting like chameleons. You know, you know what a chameleon is? It's a lizard that changes color. You put it on a piece of green cloth that turns green. Put it on a piece of red cloth that turns red. If you put it on a piece of plaid, it'll bust a gut. <laughs> they never stand for truth and all the time trying to hold to their positions. Jesus also once said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. That was true in the Christian realm and it is true in the political arena as well. It's just that very few people have the guts to tell it. Not only will the truth make you free, it can keep you free as well. And I'm going to be very brief tonight, and I'm just going to give you three truths that I believe America ought to know. Truth number one, political correctness has almost destroyed America. Walking on eggshells around socialist and communist and racist and every form of special interest groups, smoothing things over, all the while listening to them mock our way of life while we stand by and say nothing. Well, for this old boy, I'm here to tell you that day is over. That day is over. Hey, if it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's evil, if it's evil. If it's stupid, it's still stupid. We've got to stop telling our kids that everyone is a winner because they're going to get their feelings hurt when they grow up and go try to get a job. But that's the way it is now. I understand that even the ball fields around here don't keep score anymore because they don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. That destroys America's competitive spirit. That's one of the things that made America great was its competitive spirit. And about the only thing that America does now is we do service work. We don't make anything. And there's no competition anymore. We've got to stop telling our kids that no matter what horrible choices they make in life, that it's okay for them. No wonder they're out there protesting saying that I want everything that everyone else has. Well, if you do, go get a job. That's the way you get it. We've got to stop this all-inclusive attitude where anything but Christians are welcome in the public arena. We need to start standing up on our hind legs and start calling things as they are. If they blow up buildings in America, they are terrorists. That's, can you say that? Terrorists. It don't hurt to say that, does it? And if they draw a gun at a military fort and start shooting soldiers, it is not workplace violence. They're terrorists. That's what they are. And if they want to destroy our way of life and institute their own laws, as far as I'm concerned, they are my enemy and I hope they are yours too. Right. Truth number two. Anyone who wishes to bypass or subvert the United States Constitution is our enemy. Amen. 
I don't care whether they're sitting in a cave over in the Middle East or they're sitting up in the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. When they are sworn to public office, they take an oath that they will uphold the Constitution and defend it against anyone who would destroy it, both foreign and domestic. Nowadays, we have more enemies of the Constitution here at home than we got overseas. We need to bring the soldiers here to defend us. We, yeah, we have a Supreme Court justice who said she would never use the United States Constitution as a model for any country. And I say to her, there's no anchor tied to your behind. There's a plane ready to take you to Cuba anytime you want to get on it. We've got a president, if you call it that, that believes the Constitution and Congress to be irrelevant and that he can rule by executive order and there's that same plane waiting for him if he wants to get on it and it ain't Air Force One. The fact that this man was elected and that he has not been impeached is a terrible testimony as to how ignorant our country has become of the United States Constitution. Our Constitution was written, and the history books won't tell you this, at least they won't now, but the Constitution was written after a two-hour-long prayer meeting, and it's been the longest-lasting Constitution for a free nation in the history of this world. But now its pages are starting to fade after the abuse she has received at the hands of self-serving politicians whose only goal is to usurp the power of the people and take control over every aspect of the American way of life. Even school lunches are being dictated now by our government. Every single part of your life is being dictated by the United States government to one day you're going to wake up and it's all going to be gone. Maybe America needs another two-hour prayer meeting. Yeah and then have a few million march on Washington and take our country back and restore the Constitution where it belongs. We've got to remove these usurpers from office and vote out the career politicians and replace them with ordinary working people that have some common sense. Amen. I gotta have some water after that one. <laughs> Truth number three. I told you I'm going to be brief. The work ethic must be restored. Yes. Hey, folks, in case anybody's wondering, manual labor is not the president of Mexico. <laughs> My father will be 82 years old in May, and he came from a time when there were no handouts. His house was small. There was no electricity, there was no running water, no central heat, no air conditioning, no refrigerator. Yet nine people lived in that little house and they finally made it and went out on their own because my grandma had an anti-poverty program. They worked. Yeah. I've seen my father get up with a 102 degree fever, go and put chains on his truck, shovel snow in the driveway and go to work. And I'd go, Daddy, why are you doing that? He said, somebody's gotta do it and it's not gonna get done if I don't go in there and do it. That is the real work ethic that made America great. Amen. That's the real thing. <laughs> now we've got people running around with cell phones, computers, SUVs, and designer clothes while their own food stamps. And now nearly 40 million or more of our citizenry is on some sort of government assistance. In the Roman Empire of long ago, and you need to go look this up, they originally had a strong pro-family attitude and a strong work ethic. Then the government started intruding into everything in their lives and soon people left their jobs and moved to the cities where they were put under government control and care. Soon the people were without jobs and they lined up in the cities and they waited hours for the government to give them bread. And while they waited, the local governments provided them with entertainment while they waited. 
And the phrase that was coined out of that was originally in Latin and was translated into English called bread and circuses. Soon after that, the Roman Empire fell from within. Our children are not taught history at all anymore. And I'm afraid we are doomed now to repeat it if something doesn't change and if something doesn't change right now. Our people are dependent now on the government for everything. And we're quickly instituting the policy of bread and circuses in America. And just like Rome, we are soon going to run out of everybody else's money and America is going to collapse from within if we don't stop it. May God help us to reinstitute the work ethic into our homes and into our schools and stop uh, looking to the government for our livelihood. Ronald Reagan once said, and I'll close with this, government is not the solution, government is the problem. Amen. He was right then and he's right now. And I say God bless America and God save America. Thank you so much and God bless you.